Okay, so this week we're going to be looking at the main calculations that come up in the waves, sound and light section of the course. Um, so again, there's lots of theory which is often repeated in this section, but we're just going to be focusing on the maths side of things. So the first thing to focus on is this formula here. So this C is a special C. It's actually the speed of a wave. The speed of a wave is equal to the frequency of the wave multiplied by the wavelength of the wave. Now, this using this formula is very, very common in ordinary level. So I'm going to give two ordinary level years where you will have to use this formula. So we have ordinary level 2007, question 7, and ordinary level 2015, question 7. Um, you're less likely to get a full question using this formula in higher level. However, it does often come up that you will need, let's say, the frequency in a calculation. You have to work out the frequency first using this formula. You're often not told C, but what you should know is that all electromagnetic waves, they travel at the speed of light 3 by 10 to the 8 meters per second when in a vacuum okay so in higher level you're often not told c because it will be one of your electromagnetic waves and you can then use this formula to work out one of these and um, the other thing to note is your formula speed is equal to frequency times by wavelength um in the case of your mandatory experiment to find the speed of sound in air you set up a pipe closed at one air at uh, one end and um, vibrating at its fundamental frequency. So what you have here is an antinode and a node. So this is quarter of a wavelength. So this length is quarter of a wavelength. So 4L would be your wavelength here. But you also have to take into account the size of the diameter of the pipe so plus 0.3d that has to be learnt off because it's not in the log tables and it's a mandatory experiment so make sure you know it okay so moving on to talk about stationary waves okay so if i have a string which is a stationary wave at its fundamental frequency what you'll find is it looks like this you have a node a node and an antinode here if it's at its second harmonic or first overtone it looks like this and if it's at its third harmonic it looks like that and um, so what you'll find is you need to remember the fact that from a node to a node is quarter of a wavelength or an antinode to an antinode and uh sorry a node to an antinode is quarter of a wavelength and a node to a node or an antinode to an antinode is half a wavelength so in this case here the length of the string would be equal to half a wavelength in this case here the length of the string node to node to node so that's two of these will be equal to a wavelength and so on if i have a open pipe for example a tin whistle it's open at both ends what you'll find is if it's open at both ends there'll be an antinode at each end so if it's at its fundamental frequency you basically just draw an x if it is at its second harmonic you draw two x's if it's at its third harmonic you draw three x's okay and this represents an antinode node antinode so again here if we have a look here that's antinode to antinode so that's half a wavelength here we've got antinode to antinode to antinode so it's a full wavelength and so on. So for each of these, the first thing you have to do is find out what the wavelength is. You'll be told the length of the pipe and based on what harmonic it's present in, you can find out the wavelength. Then you normally in these calculations will have to use 
speed is equal to frequency times wavelength. If it's a closed pipe, um, fairly similar maths involved, but a closed pipe, it has an antinode at the open end and a node at the closed end. So with drawing these, what you tend to draw is Vs. So what we have here is one V. For this next one, um, it has to end with a V here. It has to end with a V here. So what you've got here is actually one, two, three Vs. And for the next one, one, two, three, four, five Vs. So what you'll find is in a closed pipe, you can only have the first harmonic, third harmonic, fifth harmonic. Only the odd harmonics are present. So an example of that might be the clarinet. If you work out any one of these, you can just work out this one or this one by being a multiple of it. So let's say I found out that the frequency of this one was 20 hertz. This would be three times that, would be 60 hertz and so on. Okay, so I'm just going to get you to do some questions based on this. So we have ordinary level 2004, question 8. We have higher level 2005, question 12C. And we have higher level 2011, question 8. So you can pause and you can do that question now. Okay, so we're going to look at the Doppler effect. Um, Doppler effect is the apparent change in frequency of a wave due to the relative motion between the source of the wave and the observer. So you're often asked to draw a diagram of what's actually happening. So let's say we have a source here, which should always be labelled, and it's producing sound. And this is the wave fronts here. It's coming out so... The wavelength is the same the whole time. But if that source is moving, what you'll find is it appears like it's been stretched on one side. So the wavelength appears to be longer or bigger on this side and the wavelength appears to be smaller on this side. So if I were standing here, this is with the source moving in this direction. If I were standing here, the wavelength would appear smaller. Using my formula from earlier, if the wavelength is smaller, this is a constant, so this will have to be bigger. So the frequency will appear bigger here. If I were standing here, the wavelength is bigger, so the frequency will be smaller. Now, um, label your wave fronts, label your source, make sure you show the direction that the source is moving. Now, um, there's one formula for this, which is in your log tables, but there's two different versions of it, depending on whether the object is moving towards you or away from you. So... A lot of the time people get confused what these different things mean, so let's just run through that fairly quickly. This is the apparent frequency or the observed frequency, what you think you hear. This is the actual frequency of the sound wave. This is C, the speed of the wave, and this is U, the speed of the object. So, for example, an ambulance moving at a certain speed produces sound of a certain speed. Okay, so this is the ambulance's speed. That would be the sound wave speed. Now, um, to try and remember which one to do, if you think of that minus sign as if it's coming towards you, okay, so you use the minus when it's coming towards you, and you use the plus, like, um, if you use the plus, we'll just use the pen on my finger there, like, I don't know, that stupid thing that they say with... Um, vampires stay away okay so that's when it's moving away from you okay so plus moving away from you and um, minus moving towards you okay so i'm going to give you a few questions okay so there's your questions there whether you're doing ordinary or higher and um, you often are also asked for some applications um or some uses of the doppler effect so make sure you know them as well with your theory okay next section sound intensity um, 
sound intensity is power over area. So it's the amount of sound per second. So that's the power bit, sound per second going through a particular area. So when you're doing questions like this, you normally have an object or a source producing sound and the sound is going in all directions. So if you think that this is coming out in all directions, the shape it's actually making is a 3D sphere. Read up on spelling there. Okay, so that's a 3D sphere. So when you were finding A here, what you're actually going to be using is the area of a sphere. So that's 4 pi or squared. Um, the other thing to say, which is often connected with this, is the other thing, which is sound intensity level. Another way of measuring sound. Um, all you need to know is that if the sound intensity doubles, the sound intensity level will go up by three decibels. There's normally just some kind of simple question involving the two of these. So again, I'm going to give you some questions on that. So there's your questions there. And then the final section that we're going to look at is when you're talking about light waves. Um, there's a mandatory experiment based on this as well. Okay, and it's this formula here. So the order of the images by the wavelength is equal to D sine theta. So this is, you would remember if you had a laser and you put it through a diffraction grading, what you end up getting is a bunch of dots because of constructive and destructive interference. So things that we need to know um, to find out D, D actually means the millimeters or the slit width on your diffraction grading. So you're normally told that you have, let's say, 300 lines per millimeter. To find out D, you want to find out how many millimeters in one line. So it's D is one over the number of lines or slits per millimeter. That would give you your answer in millimetres and then to change it to metres, obviously just your normal procedure multiplying by 10 to the minus 3. Okay, so some general kind of things to mention here that can be a little bit tricky. Often when they tell you the angle, they will tell you the angle between, let's say, the first order images. So the angle between the n is equal to 1s, you obviously have to divide that angle by 2 for using this formula here, okay? So often you're told the angle between two orders, to find out just the angle here, you just divide it by two. Um, other things that you might be asked, um, if you're asked to find the max number of dots that can be produced or the max order of images, what you need to do is let sine theta, the angle, be equal to 90. That's the max angle that theta could be equal to. So for max n, let theta equal 90 degrees. Um, other things that you could be asked is for the number of dots. So you would use this formula. You find out n, and let's say we had, for example, like the one I've drawn here, you found out n is equal to 2. To find out the number of dots, then you will double it and add 1. Okay, so if n is equal to 2... 2 by 2 plus 1, the number of dots you'll see is 5 dots. So again, I'll give you some questions on that. So it's just here, 2009 question 7 and 2014 question 7. Okay, so some of that was probably a little bit cringy, but we've got through the main parts there, and that's the full sheet in front of you. So have a go at all of them, and let me know if you have any questions at all.